So can I lose my salvation? How do I know that I am saved? And is it once saved, always saved? So the quick answer is no, you cannot lose your salvation. So technically it is once saved, always saved, but it's only because the Bible says that you cannot lose what you might not have had in the first place. So you can't lose your salvation if you never had it. Let's get to the show. All right, welcome to The Blessing Report with Winston Mayo, the regular Christian guy, and we have a great gospel-centered topic. Aren't we <laughs> proud that we are back to the basics? Um, salvation, how does salvation work? Um, how do I know I'm saved? Can I lose my salvation? Is it really once saved, always saved? So I'm trying to give the quick and short answers without getting to a lot of theological debates. And I want to do most world known universal um, concepts that are agreed upon. And if these concepts are agreed upon these people are probably not Christian who's debating it. So first, Christians, we are saved by grace through faith. So that is Jesus Christ's finished work on the cross, dying on the cross, paying the debt that we owed, a sin debt, and his resurrection power living on the inside of us. So you are saved through Jesus Christ alone. If anyone argues any other way to be saved, they are not saved, you are not saved if you are following that false doctrine. So heat it up. <laughs> um, it's really important to receive the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit in being born again. Scripture reference points for being born again is John 3. And it says, Jesus answered and said unto him, this is um, Nicodemus asking um, questions. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of God, I um, mean, which is born of the spirit is spirit. Then moving towards Matthew 3, 11. This is John, um, Jesus' cousin talking, John the Baptist, who baptizes. <laughs> and um, he says, I baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that comes after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the sealing of our repentance, resurrection power in Jesus Christ. So you have to... Um, be spiritually baptized, which is way more important than a natural water baptism. So how do I know if I have been baptized with the Holy Spirit? Winston, thank you that you asked. So there are fruits that follow the Holy Spirit if they abide in you. So first I wanna say, the Bible says that when Jesus died and resurrected, the Holy Spirit went out into all the world as a um, comforter, a teacher, and a testament of his spirit, right? I'm gonna do a video on the Holy Spirit, but it's like a quick answer. So we can compare the Holy Spirit being in the world just like water being in the world. Just because it's raining in Asia does not mean it's raining where I am. Just because the Holy Spirit is all in the world doesn't mean that it's inside of me. Cool? Cool. So next part of the Bible, still in the Gospels, um, it says that Jesus breathed his spirit upon the disciples and then they were able to do the works. So healings, baptisms, um, casting out demons, um, all that cool stuff came when he breathed his spirit onto them. So likewise, when we give our lives to Jesus Christ, he breathes his spirit on the inside of us and then it dwells. 
But this is the cool part, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This comes from Acts 2 on the day of Pentecost. We see that um, Jesus has already left, resurrected. Um, he already gave his spirit to the disciples, but a great wind of his spirit came out in manifestations and um, giftings and just anointing and power. That, that's what I'm looking for. Power came in that day. So that is the baptism to be consumed with fire. Holy Spirit, um, supernatural fire um, seals you, all right? So that is the Holy Spirit um, baptism that we are going for. So how do we know that we have the Holy Spirit? Good thing you asked the second time because you didn't answer the first time, Winston. We know because of the fruit that the Holy Spirit bears. and. I want to do both the natural fruit and the supernatural fruit. So I want to start off with the supernatural fruit because we like to skip over it as if it's not important. It's very important. So um, that comes from Mark 16, all right? Um, verse 16, and this is Jesus talking. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. So if you're worried about salvation, you are saved when you are baptized. But he, not natural baptism, spiritual baptism, but he that believes not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So these are the Christian basics. If you have a Jesus Batman utility belt. These are your bases. You should be baptizing. You should be casting out demons. You should be speaking in tongues. You should be healing the sick. Um, and if you come in contact with serpents, snakes, or any deadly poisonous things, it should not harm you. All right. It doesn't mean not to use wisdom and we're not privy to other things, but these are Christian basics. All right. But we also have natural fruit that we should be bearing in character for we have a lot of people who think they can speak in tongues but are hateful and unloving and unforgiving but you should be manifesting twofold fruit in the name of jesus all right and this comes from galatians 5 19. whoops that's sin um let's go to galatians 522 all right so it says but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long-suffering so patience gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance so that's self-control against such there is no law so I want to list the supernatural spiritual fruit uh, first before the um, natural fruit because oftentimes we like to be like oh I'm loving sometimes I'm kind sometimes um, it's that evidence of the Holy Spirit but um, gifting you can't argue gifting but you can argue um, natural evidence so you should be bearing I think it's nine um, spiritual not spiritual fruit natural fruit in character okay <laughs> and um, if you still have questions like and eh, Sometimes I'm that and sometimes I'm not. Let's see which fruit you should not be bearing. The um, Bible says a good tree bears good fruit. It cannot bear bad fruit. And a bad tree cannot bear bad fruit. I mean, good fruit, but bears bad fruit. So this is the bad fruit you should not be bearing. So if this is in you, you should be wary about, I'm not gonna say salvation. I don't wanna worry people but maybe salvation, but um, be wary about your fruit, your activity, your heart, and your standing with um, being in alignment with the will of God and with the Holy Spirit. So that's Galatians 5.19. Now the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lividiousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresy, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revealings, and such things of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in past time, that they which do such things shall not inherit 
the kingdom of God. All right. So if you are bearing this bad fruit, um, there are many scriptures which say basically um, sin cannot abide in us. And also they that are saved do not sin. And so just scriptures that I'm going to actually give to back these up, right? These are all found in um, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. If you want a good synopsis of the Christian walk, how it works, um, how salvation works, how does sanctification work, because um, being sanctified is being cleansed, conforming to Christ likeness. So we are transformed by being conformed to Christ likeness, all right? And um, first John um, chapter three, it says, whosoever sins is of the devil and whosoever is in God cannot sin, all right? Um, same goes with first John chapter five, whosoever is in God cannot sin, all right? So the prevalence of sin in your life and disobedience is evidence of who is your Lord and who's ruling over your life. So salvation, all right? So how do we know um, we are saved? A good analogy um, just to provide an illustration is money, all right? So sin is often illustrated by exchanging of money. We are in a sin debt just from being born. We are in debt to the flesh, sin, hell, death, destruction, all that bad stuff. You are born into debt. No privilege here, <laughs> all right? <laughs> However, um, well, I also wanna note that um, James says the wages of sin is death. So what you earn, like you work, wages is something that you earn yourself. You sin, you earn death, boom, automatic. We've all sinned, fallen short of the glory of God. So move to Jesus. Um, James also says the gift of salvation is from the Father. All right. So a gift is something you cannot earn. It's your inheritance, being of your Father, um, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, God, Allah. All right. So from there. How do you know that you have received the inheritance? Jesus did not sin, so he was worthy of the gift of salvation and eternal life. But he was crucified, he was whipped, he was beaten for our iniquities. So that is an exchange. We earn death, we, we sin, we earn death. Jesus did not sin, he earned life. However, he gave us his life. And so by him dying when he was supposed to have an everlasting life, he gives us everlasting life in acceptance of that eternal life in him, being brought up in the resurrection power from the grave, hell, death, and destruction by his power. Cool? But how do I know that I have accepted that if I am not sure. So still on this money example, if we were to go with a natural number just to help out the analogy, one billion dollars. Um, Jesus is giving you one billion dollars. Your sin debt is a hundred million dollars, all right? So it works. You pay, he has paid the cost of your debt. Um, that is your inheritance. However, if I, you, live in poverty, so the money is in our bank account, but we never accept it, right? That is what um, sin is in our life. Us having this inheritance, not um, receiving or accepting salvation, but living as if we are in spiritual poverty. All right. So being in debt to sin, being in debt to the devil, being in debt to your flesh. So behaving as if God did not free you from your sin. All right. So 
we are saved by grace. Grace is the gift of God uh, manifesting himself in the word, becoming flesh, Jesus Christ, dying, resurrecting, boom, that's grace. And faith through faith. So faith working in us. How do I know faith is working in us? The fruit that we shall bear. Okay, so um, this is important about how do we know, like knowing, all right? So we have a, a few scriptures about knowing, but basically is the trying of our faith. Um, the Bible mostly talks about the trying of our faith being through fire. So how do we know that our faith is real, our faith is genuine, and we're actually living this out? We're not, sa we're not saved by works, but faith, Believing in God without works, any evidence of him working in you is dead. So that's in James also. So let uh, faith arise in you and um, let the evidence shine through. So this is in um, sec, um, Philippians 2, 2 Corinthians 13. All right, we're going to start with Philippians 2. Um, starting with verse 11 and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father wherefore my beloved as ye have also obeyed not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence work out your own salvation with fear and trembling for it is God which works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Moving to 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Examine yourselves to see if your faith is genuine. Test yourselves. Surely you know that Jesus Christ is among you. If not, you have failed the test of genuine faith. And um, 1 John 2, um, 19, all right? They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would be, no doubt, have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not of us all. Okay, so what does that mean? Um, people leaving the faith, people um, going into sin, like choosing sin, all right? This is why it's really important to test out your faith. A lot of us um, say we believe, but in actuality, our actions, our hearts, our motives show that we don't believe. We're still in that poverty, right? Even if it's in mindset of sin poverty, spiritual bondage, okay? So that's why um, you see people li um, living as if they were um, all the way saved or whatever. Um, you can't lose salvation. Once you have it, you have it, all right? <laughs> but what the Bible is saying is the reason it appears that you have lost your salvation or you have left the faith is because, um, what, Second Peter, is it? No, First um, John, second chapter. <laughs> it says that you never had it in the first place to lose. So um, it just manifested itself as um, lack of faith. So that's why the um, Bible says not to fool yourself. It says try your faith um, to see that it is true. Um, try it by fire, um, test it out, and see if it is genuine, okay? So that's why it's really important um, to continue on. So um, I don't want to discourage people <laughs> because there are um, verses of reassurance, right? So you have God um, is close to the brokenhearted and is able to save the broken in spirit. Um, in the Gospels, the prodigal son came to the end of himself, which is being broken in spirit, possibly in heart also, and returned. So God is also said in the Bible to be married to the backslider. So it, I'm not gonna say it's okay to be um, backslidden, but um, God is able to save and able to redeem, all right? So that is the whole thing. If you come back, you didn't lose your salvation. You were just um, backsliding. You were just um, 
prodigal um, for a few seasons, okay? But the reason the Bible says to work out your salvation with fear and trembling is Romans 9. Ah, I'm not sure about that verse, but there's a verse in the Bible that says first or second, it's first or second Peter. Basically, um, Peter says that it is better that you have never tasted of um, the spirit of God and have left because you will not be able to be basically renewed, okay? So that's what Romans 1 talks about when it says being given over to a reprobate mind. So if you had salvation, I won't say had salvation, you had the Holy Spirit, you can have that, <laughs> but you actively choose um, sin, all that bad stuff, um, God will give you over and um, the Bible basically says you will not be restored. All right, so it's, it's pretty, a heavy, it's a heavy scripture. <laughs> there, there, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing um, around that, but scripture of reassurance, um, be like, oh my gosh, I sin. Am I giving over to my sin? Nope, <laughs> because um, we have Jesus who is our advocate. First uh, John 2 says, Jesus is an advocate in case we do sin and he is able to forgive us. And whosoever um, keeps his commandments, um, they are of him. But if you love the world, you do not love God. And if you do not keep his commandments, you do not love him and you're not of him. Okay. So just be reassured that we have an advocate that's able to forgive our sins. Um, it says a righteous man falls seven times. Um, God is more willing to show mercy than sacrifice. Um, these are all scriptures of like, yo, God loves you. He's fighting for you. He's ready for you to return. And um, this is how we have like security in our salvation. So um, just from my personal experiences, anytime I question like my salvation, like my security, usually I'm in sin, like I'm doing some bad stuff. <laughs> but when I am in alignment with the Holy Spirit, I'm in alignment with his will. Um, I'm keeping his commandments. I'm loving other people. That's very important. Um, if you don't have the love of the Father, the Father's not in you, okay? So that's another evidence of, um, that's the fruits, Galatians 5. Um, but when I am secure in what I'm doing, I also feel more secure about my salvation. So I really, this is just my opinion, but I really feel like if you ask that question, like, um, how do I know I'm saved? Can you lose salvation? Um, usually you're probably in a bad state. Um, that, that's what I usually were saying. Like when I, like, right, can you lose salvation? Am I saved? Um, but we need to have the assurance of Paul. Um, Paul says, um, in the new Testament, I have ran the good race and I will receive my reward. So when you know, like there's a knowing in the Holy Spirit that you are sealed um, by God. Um, when it says the work of your salvation and fear and trembling, um, I really, just like what I feel, um, in fear, that's that reverence of God. I'm acknowledging him in all your ways. Um, making disciples, love, loving God, um, with all your heart, mind, soul, body, and strength, and loving people as yourself, then you are in the will of God. So um, how do you know that you love? Um, taking care of the sick and the homeless and the widow and the orphan, just like what the Bible says, basically. <laughs> we're, we're not saved by works, but um, this is evidence of faith. Um, this is how you see that your faith is true. If it aligns with um, the word of God, this is how we know that we are um, transformed um, because we are conforming to Christ's likeness. All right. Um, so I want this to be um, words of encouragement of um, where we are in salvation. So this is the bare minimum of like, hey, 
How do I know I'm saved? Um, how do I know I'm in the right stand with God um, and salvation? So salvation is secure in um, Christ Jesus alone. So you can't lose salvation because it is Jesus finished work, grace, working on the inside of you, faith. <laughs> and so um, words of encouragement, 2 Peter 3 verse 9, it says, the Lord is not slack, is not slow, concerning his promise as some men count slowness, but is long suffering, is patient towards us, not willing that any should perish, but should that all should come to repentance. So um, coming to repentance, turning away from your sin, the evidence of grace working in your life is your ability to overcome sin. We are moving from grace to, I mean, glory to glory, to faith to faith. So evidence of that is um, the power we work in through the Holy Spirit, um, supernatural power, but also character to overcome sin. And so I really believe in what the Word of God says. Um, first, second, third John says, those who are in God do not sin. I believe that is what sanctification is. Sanctification is being um, set apart for God's use. Um, so as God is cleansing us, as we are being conformed to Christ likeness, as we are being transformed, our will to sin, our desire, our lust to sin, our bondage to sin is lessened to holiness, be holy as your father which is in heaven is holy. Truly believe that. Um, I really believe what it says, as your father in heaven is perfect, be perfect. I believe that everything that is in part will be made full in the second coming of Christ Jesus. So that's grace, that's salvation, that is faith working on the inside of us. So last parts, how do we know, all right? <laughs> um, 1 John 3 says, we know by him, by his spirit. God's spirit really secures you. Like, when I was living in sin, living stupid and crazy, I knew, bro. I, I knew. I felt like I knew I was going to hell, right? But um, that same knowing, there's a knowing and salvation. Like, um, you should be, like, assured that Jesus' blood cleanses you, that you accept that billion dollars for your debt and you don't live in spiritual poverty as if you're in bondage um, to the devil, your debtor. So we're not, we're free, um, we accept that, all right? And the Spirit, the Holy Spirit on the inside of us um, shows that to be true. Still gonna do a video on the Holy Spirit, all right? So um, last, like, two verses to stand on because I truly believe um, these verses are like our seal. No one can argue with this if they are arguing with these verses. Arguing with the Bible is blasphemy, it's heresy, right? So it's 1 John 4, 15. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him, and he is in God, all right? So anyone trying to be like, um, Jesus is not God, God is not in them. Every other religion, it's not this Jesus faith. This is the only faith that leads to eternal life through God um, in the Holy Spirit, boom. But our precedent, I guess, um, scripture is um, John, not John, Romans 10, starting with verse nine, all the way to verse 13. So really um, meditate, this, meditate on this, ask the Holy Spirit to teach you, um, saturate your spirit, saturate your life, which his love, his grace, and his blood <laughs> what? Um, nine. That if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and shalt believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That is all we need. All right. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confess is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. 
for there is no difference between the Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Um, John 15 says, as you draw near to God, he will draw near to you. So I really believe that you will have your best foot forward as you are in prayer, in fasting, in Bible study, dying to yourself, dying to your flesh, that as you lose your life, you will receive everlasting life and eternal salvation from Christ Jesus. So that's really the end of my video. <laughs> I just really wanna pray. Dear God, I just wanna thank you for everyone who is um, receiving you for the first time right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. We break off the spirit of bondage. We break off the spirit of spiritual debt, God, um, and spiritual um, poverty in the name of Jesus Christ, that by the sound of my voice, faith comes by hearing, oh Lord. So hearing comes right now by these videos, oh Lord, and that right now they confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord over their life. Not just Savior, that they will come out of hell, but Lord, to um, be um, over them to dictate how they should live that they will conform to Christ likeness to be renewed in mind oh God and have a steadfast spirit oh Lord so Lord we break off the spirit of abandonment break off the spirit of um, backsliding this we break off the spirit of a reprobate mind we break off the spirit of being prodigal Lord that they will return salvation will seal them with Holy Spirit fire in the back of your fire will just loose out, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I give you glory, ministering angels, divine connections to send out to the hearers, oh God. Thank you, Jesus, for your power and for your might and for your grace and your glory and your finished work of salvation. For we are sealed um, by your blood, by your name, by your Holy Spirit, and by your finished work on Calvary's cross, um, your death burial and resurrection, that you resurrect life in all of us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I feel great. <laughs> Light it up. Oh, man. So, um, thank you for watching the Blessing Report with Winston Mayo, the regular Christian guy. Um, remember to hit the like and subscribe button. Bro, I'm fiery right now. <laughs> um, if uh, this has been a blessing to you, um, Look at this video as your evangelism, your ministry, and your, um, your witnessing. Send it out to someone else to be a blessing. So we have security and knowing that we are saved and we can't be moved. Um, so once saved, always saved, if you are saved, all right? So if you leave us, you never was of us. But once you have it, you got it. So um, don't be reprobate. Um, Click the little bell, so you have a like and subscribe button, but you also have a bell next to the subscribe button. It actually gives you a little notification every time there's a new video uploaded by me. Videos are coming, definitely having a Holy Spirit um, and Heaven video, two type of videos. And um, yeah, we're just gonna have some cool stuff. All the Bible verses are in the description box below. <laughs> and um, if you want this gear, okay? So Jesus Christ, for everybody. Yo, Jesus is for everybody. Um, he is for anybody. Um, go out to all the world, make disciples. That's evidence of salvation also. Um, this is for from uh, my friend Eddie and his Christian clothing line, his great company, just like his great name, Jesus. So um, that is in the description box below. Uh, the, um, Eddie and his great company is the sponsor for today. And um, this is Cross Hat from Crossco. I think that's Cross Corporation or something. Um, that's cool. So last thing, if this video has been a blessing to you, hey yo, support the ministry and actually get a gift back. Also, uh, with my book, Searching for Land, it's also in the description box below. It's on um, Amazon, you go order yourself a copy. And um, even um, give a gift to someone else this holiday season. It's very helpful um, to the Christian walk. So I uh, thank you in advance for your patronage. Pa patronage. Um, thank you for buying my stuff. Mm. <laughs> um, I 
think that's it. Thank you for watching. I feel great. Y'all should feel really empowered. Uh, feel fiery. Uh, feel the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And remember to go out and make disciples. And um, know that God uses you um, to save others. So remember that God blesses people by using people to bless people. So how have you been a blessing today? Thanks for watching.